Melatonin, the sleep hormone. Yes, indeed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're sleepy? A little. It has other functions than jet lag insomnia. We have another fast track video on it, Ashley, on how it can be helpful for Alzheimer's disease with exercise and also for beta blocker insomnia. And it's no secret that it can be helpful for treating cancer, although it's often overlooked. So we'd like to. Um, give this immune booster more recognition for its role in fighting cancer. So, so what does it do? What does it do? <laughs> all right. It does a lot of things, Vicki. First of all, it stimulates the natural killer cells that are so effective at fighting cancer. And when those cells go down in number, we don't fight against cancer so well. So it's one way to actually follow it. But it does a lot of other things, too. It actually keeps the, the cancer from being able to spread and from able to, being able to grow by blocking its blood uh, supply. So it has what's called anti-angiogenic uh, powers. And doesn't it also help the cell to commit suicide? It does. Apoptosis. That's right. It, 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 our cells, all of our cells kill themselves after they've been around for a certain period of time, but cancer cells are immortal. And so it speeds up that process of apoptosis. Also, is it compatible with uh, conventional cancer oh, treatment? Absolutely. It's a wonderful way to go, and it doesn't cause any problems. So it's really safe, and I think that that's a, a good thing to add. Well, so what does it do for the symptoms of chemotherapy and radiation? It, it actually does a lot for it, and you're looking at, at getting rid of the fatigue and the weakness and the, some of the uh, neurotoxicity you see with the peripheral neuropathies. It helps with appetite. It, it, it does some uh, things to help with the weakness and, and with the the sores people get in their mouth sometimes when they're getting chemotherapy. Boy, so it does a great. lot of things. You know, even if it didn't help to get rid of the cancer, it would be great to just use it for that. Well, it does that too. But why isn't it being used? People don't know about it that much. It's Probably it, not enough money because it's something natural from well, the body. Well, that's true. I mean, there's a researcher named Lissoni in Italy that's close to committing suicide. He says this is such a very good drug, and he can't get any funding to do the studies he wants to do. He says it's a, it's a major breakthrough, and I, I think in a lot of ways it is, even though it doesn't cure cancer. It's just so frustrating, you know, when th things are like this that are natural that don't have any bad side effects or anything to not be able to use them and instead pick something like chemotherapy and radiation that well, has a lot of toxic effects. When you're talking about stage four cancers, uh, your five-year survival using all the modern technology we have in mainstream medicine is about two percent. And so even if we use uh, chemotherapy and radiation at surgery in these far advanced uh, people, uh, we don't, I mean they have a lot of side effects to go with it so why not add a little melatonin? Well, I think this is great, you know, in addition to other things that we've talked about in the past, like artemisinin and methyl jasmonate. Now IV we've got vitamin C. Yeah, and now we've got melatonin. These are great options for people. Well, I think they are. So we should open... But people shouldn't be treating themselves, though. Well, probably not. But, you know, if your doctor isn't cooperating and you don't have a, a, you don't have a complementary alternative doctor or an integrative doctor, it's not the worst thing in the world because we're taking already, what, for jet lag and for insomnia. Yeah, and but I don't, you have to take a lot more. I mean, where would a person go to find a doctor that could help them with this? Well, that's a problem. The, uh, the Cancer Treatment Centers of America has a, a lot of uh, doctors who do that. And they did a study, actually, that showed that the one-year survival, when they used melatonin in doses of 10 to 40 milligrams, was up 25 to 60 percent. So it, it does something that's above and beyond what we usually get in mainstream therapies. Well, another thing what you could do is you could share this information with your healthcare practitioner. There you go. I couldn't see even an oncologist who's very mainstream in his thinking saying, no, oh, no, don't do that because it's going to hurt you. And it has all these other powerful effects. I mean, it, it does a lot in terms of helping sleep. It, it lowers temperature a little bit. It's got a lot of antioxidant potential in it. It protects against uh, DNA damage, and it has immune boosting effects. It's anti-aging. I mean, the list goes on. Well, would you recommend that people just take it normally? No, I think if you have cancer, that would be something to consider. And of course, it's always better to have an integrative oncologist who can support you through that process. But it's one more tool in our bag. And it's a pretty safe tool. And for people that have cancer, sometimes it's pretty rewarding.